Then like I eat like 10 at once. I'm just like Whoa. What up everyone, Michael B. Petty here. Um, I'm feeling a bit under the weather. I feel like shit, I look like shit, I sound like shit. So I'm gonna do a bit of a difference in videos today. I'm just gonna do a bit of narration. Um, but I wanna talk about Shrimpgate and how this has completely exploded into something that I never actually foresaw coming. Because in my mind, Amberlynn Reed has always been some somewhat of a train wreck so i had no idea that it could um potentially explode into this firestorm of people unsubbing from her and people finally coming around to realizing just the amount of garbage that she spews on a daily basis but before i get into all that we need to kind of talk about what led us to this right now amberlyn likes to claim over and over again that she is not a weight loss channel hey, um, my name is amberlyn and i wanted to start um, a YouTube channel for weight loss. But if you simply scroll through all of her videos, you will see that she consistently ping pongs between weight loss, eating out, weight loss, mukbangs, weight loss, torrid hauls, weight loss, whatever she thinks is going to get her the most clicks is what she will do. I mean, in her recent video where she talks about how she is not a weight loss channel anymore, she explicitly shows us that she doesn't pick her trolley thumbnails think that I choose my thumbnails I, I, I don't <laughs> this is the studio creator creator studio whatever app and I'm just showing you that YouTube chooses my thumbnails they just choose three random spots throughout the video and it's always the same spots I've noticed and um, that's the one I usually go with the first one they put as my thumbnail so those are the three ones they chose, and that one was just automatically put as is. So I just wanted to show people, like, I'm not the one choosing these thumbnails. Just, just an FYI, I just want everyone to know that. When there's literally three options for her to pick from, she's like, I don't choose them, YouTube chooses them for me. Girl, we're not that dumb. And honestly, this all comes down to her believing that she is infinitely smarter than anyone. Doctors, other people her friends, her family, uh, other medical professionals, her subscribers, other YouTubers. She, I think the most consistent thing in Amberlynn's life is that she truly does believe that she is smarter than everyone else. So how did this all culminate? How did we get to people, her losing almost 10,000 subscribers in 24 hours? Well, this all tracks, this all started when Obese Beast released a video pretty much pleading to Amberlynn to let him help her lose this weight and to actually be successful on her weight, quote unquote, weight loss journey. Now, when he sent that video out, I was skeptical at first, not because I find him to be any kind of, I don't think he's malicious or anything like that. It's just, I was skeptical about like how he thought he was going to be able to actually help her because Amberlynn is sick, sick. Like she's not just like someone who needs to lose 60, 80 pounds or even 100 pounds. She is someone who needs to lose almost 400 no she actually needs to lose 400 pounds and more than 400 pounds now so when i saw him re releasing this vi releasing the video pleading to her i was like Ugh, this isn't gonna go well because first of all you're putting your brand your reputation on the line as someone who is successful in weight loss and someone who does help other people in their successes in weight loss to a girl who traffics and pedals in the most trolly controversies that have ever existed on this fucking platform almost. And like I eat like 10 at once, I'm just like <laughs> I mean, she's Onision, but, in, but 500 pounds heavier than he is and probably, I don't know, she's pretty much Onision, like it's, I don't know. So when, when he reached out to her, I was like, the, my only criticism to him was and I even wrote it on, I, if I can find the comment, I'll find it. But I even said, just be careful with her. Because not everything that you think she is, is that it, it, there's more that meets the eye with her. And there's a reason why people dislike her. There's a reason why people do not like Amberlynn Reed. And it's not because she's fat. Okay, like I know that that's the misconception. I know that's something that she likes to put out there. I know that's something that um, Chantel, Foodie, Flobby Bobby likes to put out there too. No, people don't like you because your attitudes suck. And you do really shitty things to other people. So in turn, people treat you how they think you should be treated. That's just what it is. Now, Amberlynn was so hyped, so excited about Obese to Beast. This is someone that she allotted, someone that she praised, someone that she looked up to, coming to her, 
is giving her advice. And what did Amberlynn do? None of it. She didn't. She didn't. Keep, the all the this the only information that she retained or used was information that would help her continue doing the behavior that has led her to become almost six hundred pounds. So. When that happened, and I think what ha- what when Obisa B saw this, he was like, "Damn, she can't do this by herself. She can't. She she obviously doesn't lacks the willpower to actually try. She lacks she lacks the intelligence to actually know better that this would somehow be a wake up call for Amberlynn. And he did it sensibly. He did it compassionately. He did it. I honestly think he did it lovingly." And he did it logically, and that's wh- that is where he me- messed up. Is he didn't he didn't continue with the ass padding, or he didn't handle her enough with baby enough gloves. As soon as he started spitting logic, as soon as he started spitting facts, I knew it was a wrap for him. That, but I think I've I've started to notice that I think what's might be more important, uh, or at least just as important, is making money on YouTube. And there's nothing wrong with making money on YouTube. But when it's coming from you kind of manipulating people and kind of lying about your intentions, that's, you know, not the best thing. Uh, Again, that's not the end of the world. It's not that big of a deal. The reason I'm making this video is because I truly believe, and I mean this with as seriously as I can say it, that she is, Amberlynn, you you are very close to dying. And that sounds like dramatic, but I I truly, truly believe that. And that is very, very real. The reason I've put off making this video for as long as I have is because it's hard to want to make a video about someone that you truly believe is, you know, one foot in the grave. But at the same time, I have this platform and I want to, hopefully this will jumpstart you. Hopefully this will at least like show you that there are people out there that genuinely care about you. I knew that she was going to either completely ignore him or she's gonna manipulate the situation into her favor. And that's exactly what she did. The sad thing, and this is the only thing I will ever kind of feel bad about, well, other than her being super, like I understand what it's like to be super fat. I understand what it's like to hurt when you wake up in the morning. I, I get that, I've been there. Another person that did try to reach out to Amberlynn to help her um, with her weight loss too was Everyday Damn Fitness. Now I know that he didn't have a personal interaction with her, but I find him to be incredibly knowledgeable and uh, genuine in his belief in his no nonsense um, approach to weight loss. So when he did his video essentially pleading to Amberlynn's family to help her because it is no longer Amber is no longer in control of her own actions at this point and she can't seem to find the willpower to say no to things. In his mind, he thought, well, if I plead to the sensibilities of um, Amberlynn's family members, then maybe they can step in and help save this girl's life. The sad thing is that he doesn't understand that Amberlynn doesn't really have a family. Over 500 pounds at 5'3". Everything is going to be very, very, very hard. I can hear how hard it is for you to breathe. I can hear you having a hard time breathing through the camera. You need help, woman. Like that. Can nobody like? There should be nobody happy around her. If you, if any, if any of you are out like around her or watching this, if you actually care about this woman, if you say you care about her, actually show it and beg her to get help because she is she is in very serious danger right now. Um, the other thing that I do actually sympathize with her on is the fact that she doesn't have a family. Like she literally has no family around her. She has no loved ones, no childhood friends. Now the only people around her are the people that are essentially living off of her. And that's a really sad and scary and insular solitary place to come from. Right. That's not a very healthy place to be from. So when I saw him make that video, I was like, God, he really doesn't understand the dire straits that Amberlynn is in, right? Because you can manipulate people into doing what you want. In fact, it's at times easier to um, to manipulate someone who is your family member than compared to like someone who is a friend. But when you watch shows like My 600 Pound Life or you watch uh, or even going to the weight loss support groups I go to, there have been times where you had to bring your family members in so that the doctors and everyone can give them the rules, the the regulations, the things you do, the things you do not do. And sometimes that in of itself is enough to 
get the person to snap out of it and not allow the behavior to continue anymore, at least with their help. Like if you want to go and eat all the food, you can go and eat all the food, but you got to go get it yourself. You got to pay for it yourself, all, all that stuff, right? So I think in his mind, that's what he thought he was doing. If I can if I can appeal or if I can play on the sensibilities of the people around Amberlynn that love her, that want to see her alive, that want to see her healthy, maybe we can nip this in the butt. The sad part is those people don't exist. The only people in Amberlynn's life that quote unquote care about her are the people that she affords a lifestyle to. So these people have no say. These people have no way of actually being able to fight back or to say anything because Amberlynn will use every tool in her toolbox to make sure that she gets what Amberlynn Reed wants. And she herself even says in one of her Instagram Q and A's, she's asked the question, um, has honestly, has anyone super close to you sat down and had the talk about your weight? And she replies, no, never. Now, either she's lying which I have a strong feeling she is. I have, a, I have a very hard time believing that no one in her life has ever come to her and been like, girl, you're, go you're going down a path to nowhere. This isn't going to go well. This isn't going to uh, look good on you. Not, I, don't, I don't believe that for one second. It's either that or these people have been conditioned to never, ever dissent from what Amberlynn Reed wants. Either this is her way of manipulating the audience into believing that no one truly loves her because Amberlynn loves that narrative or people truly don't love her. I don't know. It, 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 it's either of those things. Um, she also does this reacting to hate co comments video, which was such a, a, I understand why she's doing it because it does give her a lot of views. And she understands, that's one thing Amberlynn does. If Along with her addiction to food, probably, her addiction to YouTube is probably greater. And the two are not mutually exclusive. I think that the two um, happen at the same time and they coexist together and they actually compound on one another. And I'll get into more of that towards the end of the video. But honestly, her reacting to those hate comments, she's such, she's so she's it, it, this is her way of rebelling i think and this is her way of uh standing up to the haters but honestly i don't you're giving it she gives it so much life all the time that it festers and it grows in her quote unquote community and then this is what happens right you you essentially lose all goodwill because she never really talks about the people who actually want to see her succeed. She only talks about the haters and the people that want her to keep living the life she's living which is a life to an early death which is that's sad but that's just the truth okay so even in that video she talks about how it's the part where she's talking about someone guessing her weight and she's like oh if you could do that you should go and work at a fucking circus da, da, da. like she's pushing 625 pounds in this video no doubt it's really funny when people can just look at me and be like i know how much you weigh have you guys ever been to the fair or like an amusement park where they have to guess your height your age and how much you weigh you should do that do it because you think you can just look at someone and know their weight boo you'll be making bucos of money you bitch this is a circus have you not what have you not got that through your head yet that this is essentially a circus online like this is we are watching if, if this is the 1920s and barnum and bailey's was out there it's still out here collecting human beings is like people to gawk at you'd be on the list they'd be hitting up your door they'd be knocking on your door because they would love to put come and meet the 600 pound woman okay Th that's where we're at this is this you are you would be in one of the rings in the three ring circus so for you to sit here and pretend that like this isn't what this is what it is girl this is a circus this is a joke and people are are fucking over it. You've lost all your goodwill that you had with your community when it came to supporting you because you just throw it in people's faces. You want to, you'd rather sit on camera and moan about and about how good the food is than actually do something to save your life. And you can't fault the viewers for being over it. And then she does the shrimp mukbang where she comes to clear her name or to counterpoint. Um, all of obese to beast points that he made about morbidly obese people doing mukbangs. And I agree with him on that point. I mean, I've always been 
I just don't think it does. I just think it does nothing for fat people to sit on camera and eat. I just really, it just doesn't do. And I know that there are a lot of people out there that are be like, well, it's their life. They're right. It's their life. If they can do what they want, it's, it is what it is. And I agree. They can do what they want. I just think it looks stupid. And I think it looks fucking crazy for morbidly obese people to sit on camera and eat copious amounts of food and to then sit there and be upset when people have something stupid to say to you. Okay. If people are, if people are bold enough to say dumb shit to you walking down the street or give you dirty looks when you're riding the cart at Walmart. What makes you think people aren't going to be bold enough to say something in your YouTube comment when you ate a whole large pizza? Okay, like I and you're 500 pounds. Like, are you kidding? Like, of course, people are going to have something to say. Like, and I, I think that for your own well being and your own mental well being and your own mental health, you shouldn't do it. As a morbidly obese person, you just shouldn't do it. You shouldn't, I just don't think you should eat, period, on camera. I think it's unhealthy and I think. I'll get into more of that later. But anyway, so we go into Shrimpgate. She's sitting there smacking her lips. This is the most animated. The most animated Amberlynn Reed is on her channel is when she's eating. And and that's the scary part. She only moves to eat. <laughs> that's the only. And she moves from the bed to the table to back to the bed. Like, it's it's sad. Like, that's the part we're at. And instead of hearing what obese the beast has to hear, she only hears what she wants to hear. And then she's going to reframe those words to fit her narrative and to um to bolster her being able to continue to do the shitty behavior that has gotten her to this point the topic for today is mukbangs and weight loss this is like such a big thing because obese to beast made another video um kind of talking about mukbangs like obese people doing mukbangs and like mixing weight loss with mukbangs so i personally messaged him um because we have talked in private before um like because he made two videos about me and then a video about mukbangs before the mukbang video i um messaged him this was before the mukbang video so before he started talking about mukbangs I messaged him and just been like, I just asked him like, why couldn't you tell me like in a message that you, everything you said in the video, why couldn't you tell me? So, um, he answered, obviously. And then, um, he explained that like, mukbangs shouldn't be done by people on a weight loss journey because um that's the only things that the viewers see that makes sense and all but my whole thing is like this is first of all this is my life i'm an adult i can choose what i want to do versus what i don't want to do and like another big thing is like just because you are seeing one meal out of the what 15 i have in a week how is that gonna decipher everything do you get what i'm saying and there are skinny mukbangers out there they don't gain they don't gain weight at all um there have been mukbangers out there who have lost weight it is a thing it's not something that's crazy it's easy to gain weight doing it, obviously, but it's also not that hard to lose weight while doing it. So she's talking about how there's skinny mukbangers who eat and don't gain a ton of weight, and there's fat muk mukbangers who eat and they maintain their weight. None of these people have anything to do with you. Like, yes, they're on YouTube. Yes, they do mukbangs. I don't even call what you do mukbanging. I would call what you do self-harm, but like, yes those people do exist does that mean that you should do it like i is that the is that the logic we're spinning here is that like because other people are doing it that means you should do it too like come on girl that's so stupid you're at a point in your health 
where you can't afford to be doing shit like this. Same with Flobby Bobby, too. I know she likes to sit here and pretend that she can eat four slices of pizza, but then we really find out later on that, like, it's not really that. Oh, that I could make this work, and I, and, you know, thinking that I would have the discipline to eat four pieces of pizza, which I did, and I shot the rest out, and it was wasting, but at the same time, it was risky, you know? So I shot it out, um, and I just got back from a major binge. I had a piece of, I went to Wild Wing, I had eight boneless wings, an order of fries, and a huge, huge piece of Reese's cheesecake. So, and that's after like earlier after the pizza I steamed these king crab legs and I ate them all she eats the four slices of pizza and then she goes and eats like a whole thing of Alaskan king crabs and then goes on over to Buffalo Wild Wings and gets like you, so for you to sit here and pretend that like oh you eat one super caloric dense meal a day for your videos and that's it it's bullshit and we know it's bullshit because we see you we're, the audience is not that stupid. The audience is not that dumb and blind to sit here and see that there's no weight loss happening. In fact, there's weight gain happening, okay? It's not that hard to look at someone and say, they didn't lose any weight. Or it's not that hard to look at someone and be like, looks like they gained a little bit of weight. For you, And then for you to sit here and retell the lie or to reinforce the lie that this is your one meal a day, when we know it's not, we know it's not because a week later, you're going to come on here and talk about how you gained weight and you had a new highest weight. So for you to continue that behavior is crazy. And then she tops the cherry on top is she tops it off with uh, we're kind of over people supporting us only doing what they want us to do. I know you guys know Feudy Beauty, Foodie Booty, food, food, whatever. It's hard to pronounce Chantel. And she's kind of where I'm at right now, where it's just like, we're over. I don't want to put words in her mouth, but I have talked to her privately. And I do watch her videos. We're kind of just over people only supporting us when we're doing what they want us to do. That's just not how life works. You either like us or you don't, or you support us or you don't. But where's the appeal? You know, I am I mean, this is... This is my life, okay? I'm gonna live it how I want to live it. If I'm telling you, let's just say I don't wanna lose weight. Let's just say I didn't want to. My choice, you know? You are more disappointed about this than I am and this is my life. So it's like, for me, I don't understand that type of response other than I think it's just people who are just waiting to hate. People want you to live? My God, how dare these people? How dare these people out here want you to le lead a healthy life? How dare these people want you, you to increase your life expectancy past 35? How dare these people? How dare these people not want to see a 600-pound girl eat herself to death on camera? How dare these people, Amberlynn? How could they do this to you? I mean, my God, the victimhood in that is so fucking nuts. And she she's doing this, mind you, eating a while eating a shrimp cocktail platter that you would take to a family event or to a picnic to share with six other people. Not to sit there and eat in one second. And I know she, she's like, oh, I only have... But we know you ate the whole fucking thing. And then she tops it off with the apology video that she couldn't even be bothered to do a regular sit-down video to get out her expensive camera that we had to hear about or hear her edited on her stupid, her expensive MacBook Pro that we had to hear about. No, she had to use Snapchat and then she just screen recorded it and then posted it on her YouTube channel because that's how much Amber Lynn cares. That's how much she cares about doing an apology for the people who essentially support her lifestyle, right? And all I have to say is that apology was bullshit. That apology was the only time her or Chantel show any kind of contrition is when their life, their their access to food is being threatened and their access to their YouTube money is being threatened. And honestly, that's sad. Like it's, it's they, the, the only time that they actually get upset and actually show some like genuine emotion is when they're 
their pipeline to their food is being like taken away from them. And that is through YouTube. So as soon as they started losing subscribers and as soon as they started to see that this isn't just a fluke and more and more people are, are, are starting to latch on to this idea of, well, you know what? I don't want to be here for this. I don't want to, you know, that's when they want to show some contrition. That's when they want to show some remorse. That's when they want to do this whole, oh, the song and dance of, oh, I've, I understand now. Um, you're invested in my journey. Da 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 da. When all we've heard every other week from these women is how you shouldn't care. It's their life. They're gonna do what they want to do. Da 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 da. And now they're gonna flip the script. And now it's. I should. You're right. I should care. I'm going to. I'm going to show you guys that I. I can lose the weight and I can get healthy and that this isn't the right move. Boo, bitch. Boo. Bye. That is so dumb. That is so. First of all, to sit here and want to save your life because other people want you to save it. That's crazy. Second of all, you only cared because it started to affect your pocketbook. That is the only reason you cared. And I would have been. That have been way more respectful. Been like, look. This is this is the, my only job. This is the only thing I'm good at. This is my only life skill, and I need this money. And I promise to no longer be that asshole on camera anymore. And I'm just gonna sit here and do my mukbangs that I want to do and keep it pushing. And th honestly, that'd have been fine. But y'all want to sit here and roll around in the mud with everyone about what little every little thing people has to say about. And that's the other thing too is I will agree. There are probably some people that say some pretty heart hurtful and heinous things to you. But the shit that you guys pick out that is that you guys consider hate ain't really that bad. Like it's like it, people are being blunt with you and people are being honest with you. And y'all do not like that. You hate it so much. OK. And honestly, when Amberlynn set that video out, she didn't care because in that next breath, she's. Or not in the next breath, but in the next, in the next, in the within twelve hours, she's retweeting this tweet from someone essentially telling her that what everyone else is saying to her is wrong, and that she should just keep doing. Which she says, "Ah, oh, thank you, love you too." And the, in this, first of all, I love that it's saved under shopping list or whatever. But she says, "What people are doing to your channel right now is emotional blackmail. It's manipulative and abusive to all the people that have unsubscribed." I say, "Good riddance." She doesn't need you. Well, she actually does. I saw loads of people saying that, saying they are your, your bosses in the comments. Get your heads out of your asses. She owes you fuck all. If you are genuinely worried about someone you care about, you don't mock and bully them. You support them. She is right. You are haters and wouldn't dream of acting the way in real life. A lot of us would. She puts out free content for you to watch. Spends her days editing and you are encouraging people to watch reaction channels so she doesn't get the credit or views. You would all lose your shit if this was happening to you. You're trying to destroy her livelihood. Holding a person with mental health issues over a barrel to make yourselves feel superior. Well done. Bet your parents are proud. Amberlynn, you are loved. You are uh, enough. No one is perfect. That right there, that mentality, she, she's going to retweet that after pretending to show some contrition. She gives fuck all about what people are really saying. She gives fuck all about people having legitimate and uh, concerning opinions about her and criticisms to her. What that, what that retweet says to me is that she's only doing this to save face because she wants to make money. And the truth is that her viewers are her boss, in a sense. These people give her money. Without them, she has no livelihood. As much as she doesn't want to believe that or her and babies don't want to believe that, that's the fact. Facts are facts. And she needs to get over it. And yes, there are probably people that bully her. Yes, there are people that mock her. I mean, I'm one of the people that mock her. But girl, that's just the fact that people are going to get mocked. That is what it is. And when you're doing crazy shit online, people are going to have an opinion about it. That just is what it is. And she doesn't spend days doing this. She doesn't, she barely does this. Okay. She, she barely, she probably spends an hour out of her day at most doing any of this shit to eat on camera. Girl, it's, she's not out here doing fucking Shane Dawson documentaries or something. So that's crazy. And I also love how in that shrimp gate video and on the, her last, she keeps saying, this is pre-recorded. This is pre-recorded what, three days ago? This is pre-recorded three days ago and somehow you've had an epiphany in those 72 hours? Th that's the thing too with Foodie Beauty and Amberlynn is they have these short-lived epiphanies over and over again. They cycle through these emotions so quickly that it's so hard for the viewer to catch up or to find 
to make heads of tails. Like they, one second they're, oh, I need to do this weight loss. You're right, blah, blah, blah. The second they get, fuck you. Fuck everyone that has something nasty to say about me. I'm gonna eat myself. I'm gonna eat my Doritos. I'm gonna eat my pizza. I'm gonna do what I want, blah, blah, blah. Oh God, I feel like shit. I've eaten so much food. I, I'm gaining so much. I feel like a fat slob. Help me, poor me, pity me. I'm going to do a weight loss journey. I'm going to do a water fast. I'm going to do, I'm going to drink jugs of water that are fucking super wasteful. I'm, you know, it's, you can't catch up. And so after a point, the audience is just like, what the fuck? Like, this is crazy. This is leading to nowhere positive. This is leading to nowhere good or sane for anyone. And I know a lot of people talk about Amberlynn and Chantel's food addiction, and I'm sure that it exists. And I'm sure that they do have an issue with binge eating, and I'm sure that they do have an issue with overeating, and they have all of the above. Anything that having to do with eating, they probably have an issue with it. But the YouTube addiction is probably going to be the, their their downfall because they are addicted to YouTube. They couldn't. I think to most people. If they were getting the amount of criticism and the amount of negativity on their channel, I think they would just stop. I think they would just be like, what's the fucking point of this? I, I think not a lot of people would double down and go out and buy a food tray to eat from the, in their car. from a, Like, not a lot of people would do that. I think a lot of people would be like, fuck, I either need to change this up or put forth a persona that's not that's more caring or more whatever to people to get people to get some goodwill going that these 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 women don't do that these women think that they are entitled to the the platform of youtube and think they are entitled to the money that youtube affords them and that they can say do whatever the fuck they want and no one can do or say anything to them or no one can have any kind of dissenting opinion about them and the truth is that youtube is what does enable them to eat that much food because eating that much food every day to maintain that weight or to gain that kind of weight it's a lot of food and i know that you can eat unhealthy food and there's a lot of unhealthy food that's high in calories and stuff like that but when you're five two and you're reaching 600 pounds you're eating a lot and i don't even and that's still a lot of unhealthy food so or when you're 400 pounds at five one or whatever and you're still gaining weight you're i mean when they do really talk about what they do binge on, that's a lot of food. That's expensive food. And they eat out a lot. A lot of them d rarely cook. So I, it, when, when, you, when you compound YouTube addiction, their food addiction, the both are not mutually exclusive. They both go together. And my advice, stop doing YouTube for a good month or two. Get your fucking eating under control you need to stop incentivizing your brain to think that eating on camera for money is a good idea. I think that's exactly what obese to beast was trying to convey to you guys in the nicest way possible. But of course y'all are going to take it as an attack. Get off YouTube, get off social media, go somewhere, see a medical professional, actually have someone lay out an actual eating schedule for you. Take your fucking credit cards away Take your bank accounts away from you. Put them in. Have someone else hold on them to you, so you can't just go and order food and whatever you want whenever you want it. And actually do something about it and confront that. Don't do it on YouTube. You we don't need to see you struggle through a weight loss journey. Real talk. We don't need to see you because if you were mentally for, if you were mentally strong enough to handle the criticisms, I would say go for it. But that's not the case. We've you've proven over and over again that you both are so fragile and so thin skinned that you can't handle it. So don't do it anymore. Just don't talk about it anymore. Just go off somewhere and fucking do it and lose some fucking weight. And then when you lose 40 pounds, come back and talk about how you lost the 40 pounds. But to sit here and do a day in day out vlog of you struggling and it, it just makes no sense. I it, logistically, it just makes no sense. So get off YouTube, cut that addiction out of your life. And then try and that uh, come back two three months later and then try to 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 keep your channel going or whatever because right now it ain't working well i don't know that's all i gotta say about that that was a long fucking rant i'm sorry for that um remember to like comment and subscribe um you can follow me on instagram and twitter at michael b petty um until next time guys toodles